Uh, and uh, this film is linked with the, well, things, which is quite common uh, in, in our region. Uh, uh, this is a reflection on, on power, what power is. And uh, the association, which is quite often made, with the power, it's a reflection about its cruelty, about the violence caused by power. And I think that uh, Ivan the Terrible, Ivan Grozny, is a figure, a key figure, uh, not only in Russia, but also in many other uh, East or Central European countries, a key figure of... Um, of power, of this rather dark side of power. Next, uh, Alexandra, please. Uh, mm, may I please? You have it? Uh, yes, yes, the next. May I say, okay. Okay, so as you see, the beginning of the film I recommend it you to, to watch this film. It is uh, quite easy to be fine. It's a quotation from the Apocalypse, St. John, Apocalypse, uh, verses about four riders of Apocalypse, four riders, the last one, Pale Rider, his name is Death. Uh, I make the short reference to popular culture. If uh, some of you, one of you is a, a lover of Western movies, once upon a time, as a matter of fact, many, many years ago, uh, almost uh, 35 years ago, Clint Eastwood restart Western movies with his film, movie, Pay Raider. Uh, camera make our help us to make acquaintance with uh, uh, with Tsar and his Policeman Aprichniki, police apart, uh, who are riding on the horseback in order to introduce uh, Tsar's will. But Tsar's will is necessarily linked with the death of all, death and fear of all. Opposants. Uh, and I quote here, sorry, <laughs> the photograph from the movie uh, showing, oh, yes. You see uh, the saddle of uh, Pay Rider, whose name is Death. It is the saddle of Oprichniki, they were attached to the saddles, heads of black dogs cut off and attached as a symbol of violence, as a symbol of cruelty. And at the same time, dog symbolized in this movie uh, symbolize the loyalty of uh, Oprichniki toward, toward the Tsar. I should say that neither um, Sorokin's novel is a historical novel and the same for the movie. It is not a historical movie. It is a movie about power it is a movie which might inspire this, uh, this discussion about the power 
uh, and you see short description. What is important? Uh, what well, director is very known in Russia, uh, even stern camera, but actors. I should say that both Mamonov and Yankovsky, they are symbolic figures in uh, Russian uh, artistic industry. Mamonov is a songwriter, performer, um, a star, complicated star, I should say, of alternative culture as well. Yankovsky, he was during Soviet times a, a, mm, a very popular, very handsome actor playing many, uh, many interesting and très à la mode movies. Here, his role as Metropolite Philip uh, Philip Kowitschow, uh, it's his last role and he's completely changed his personality completely in comparison to his earlier roles in Soviet and Russian cinema. And uh, next, mm, mm, next, uh, oh, next slide, please. Couldn't say that. Do it myself. Mm. Mm. Alexandra, may I ask you to put next uh, slide on the vision? Mm. <laughs> Well, mm, ah, sorry. Ah, well, this is. Uh, Yes. Yes. Next. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. just just have some problem with with uh -huh. internet. So so I'm sorry. Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> I think that our listeners and viewers <laughs> were not in the movie. I I should say this is not a historical one. So history is a material used in order to say the story, which is inevitably linked with historical events, but it's not a historical construction. It is something like variation over the historical themes. So plot in the movie, a new harmony or disharmony in political regime. The year uh, and event, of course, which is related to the uh, historical event, because uh, really in historical uh, narration, you will find that even the terrible, even the fall, uh, divided uh, his kingdom, his tardom, into two parts. The first one uh, known as uh, uh, governance, James, uh, uh, and uh, the second uh, land of and people, Zemstina, uh, and the uh, first one uh, governed by Tsar himself with his uh, partners, policemen, men apart, or Prichniki. So this is a plot, and this division of land and people are. Uh, is a source of tension between Tsar, his will, his vision of a uh, new world, new perfect order, and people, commoners, not in the uh, 
commoners in a sense, common people not included in Tsar's vision of uh, salvation, because Tsar considered himself as, uh, on the one hand, person treated by uh, mm, by mm, how to say um, um, uh, by God uh, command on the other hand he is a source of salvation his acting his acts and deeds provide people with salvation this is a generous speaking you see Tsar and his court apart Tsar Ge, Yanke, and the surrounding court composed of uh, of oprichniki so this is a one part of of uh, of the scene of people engaged in this game between Tsar and people and our subjects. The second, and if I may uh, ask, okay, mm -hmm. the second, uh, as you see, I I don't tell you the whole story, but I, I'm going through the dark <laughs> and, the, and through the images. The second part is uh, Metropolite, uh, his cousins, uh, soldiers, one of his cousins is a soldier, uh, commoners in the sense that people who don't belong to Oprichnina. And here you got a very interesting scene. Metropolite was trying to, to hide uh, soldiers, uh, uh, among many of them his cousins, uh, soldiers, in order to protect them against the uh, uh, the Tsar, uh, Tsar, uh, <laughs> well, uh, uh, so, uh, against the Tsar, greed, Tsar, wrath. And you see antagonists, Tsar and Metropolite, they represent two, uh, two visions of the world. Tsar, a punitive one, his solid fundamental power should be exerted through death, threat of death, uh, loyalty, where every disobedience is considered as a disobedience almost to the God and inevitably must be punished with all possible force. According to Metropolite, art of governance is based, should be rather based not on the vengeance, cruelty, violence, but must be moderate by Christian sense of mercy. Both they discuss during the movie through the acts and deeds and through and during the personal meetings when they discussed openly. Uh, we know from the film that they know each other since their childhood. As a matter of fact, Metropolite was invited by Tsar to Moscow and Tsar back Metropolite to help him to find uh, to find new world and to follow him in his 
are architectural, intellectual, political investments uh, driving his monarchy, his court, and his people into New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is a bi biblical, evangelical term uh, linked with the second, uh, with the parousia, the second arrival uh, of Christ. Tsar is waiting for this second coming of Christ. And in order to prepare himself and his people, he, on the one hand, is working on the, on the, how to say, on the people, he is preparing themselves. He banished his disobedience, disloyalty. This is this part of cruel preparation for new Christ coming. On the other hand, Tsar is preparing a building. As a matter of fact, Ivan the Terrible, he did that during his reign. So we see in a movie, I would say, uh, two, two ways uh, followed by Tsar. Punishment and cruelty that should eradicate the evil considerate, and that is a uh, evil considerate by Tsar, but even as the opposition to his will. And his will, you got now, you see, his will is to build up New Jerusalem, a safe place where the chosen ones should live and wait for second Christ coming, second and definitive one. And uh, we know that by own words uh, of Tsar, and we know that also by the acts he does he commit inside this new Jerusalem? Which is, as a matter of fact, something, a complicated matter, for the second coming of Christ should be associated with a goodwill, uh, but in even interpretation, it is not a goodwill. It is rather the punishment and the, the chance to survive only for the chosen one, Tsar, first of all, and the others chosen by Tsar. And this mm, image, this will, this policy, full of hope and full of punishment, cruelty, which as in which form from Tsar, not a monk or saint person waiting for his master Christ, but form rather a satana, a devil, a personalized evil, this definitely end the cooperation, the understanding between um, Metropolite Philip and Tsar. So Tsar decide to kill Metropolite. May I ask the next uh, uh, the next uh, slide? Yes. Look, this is a very, uh, very telling image. Even uh, explain to young girl how he would prepare his new Jerusalem palace 
for Christ. He was saying to the girl that there is only one entrance to the new Jerusalem. So Christ presenting himself and entering to the building will find would find himself in a trap with no way out. So you see that New Jerusalem is on the one hand a precious place for second coming of Christ. On the other hand, it is a trap for Christ. So uh, to some extent, Tsar would be a person who will catch on Christ in a trap. So Christ would become his prisoner in a way. And New Jerusalem is also, and we see that in we see that uh, in, the, in the movie, it is a place of slaughter, of slaughter of Tsar's enemy. It is a presentation, the fight between Philip Kowitschow cousin and uh, and the beer and the. Uh, this knight, this uh, military commander, was slaughtered by by the animal. So, New Jerusalem is something which might be considered as a total opposition to the glorious image we see in the apocalypse of. St. John, New Jerusalem. This is a new place. This is a perfect place for people who finally had been saved by, uh, by the passion and resurrection of Christ. So even the terrible New Jerusalem is something opposite which might be considered the opposite. Well, this is a mm, short story. Uh, and what is, I think, interesting as a, uh, as a one part of, of general discussion about the power, about the coercive power, and about the figure of Mm, even the terrible, as a representative of some important uh, characteristic of power in Russia, generally speaking, or wider in Central Eastern Europe. A first, uh, first move into this direction is, of course, that inevitably power is using, overusing, abusing the violence. So power and violence are inseparable. So the first statement. Second statement, power is a kind of madness. As you remember, my first reference about pay radar was uh, American film, Western, uh, made by Clint Eastwood. Now I would like to make a reference to Russian uh, movie, uh, second part of even the terrible uh, made movie made by, by Sergius Eisenstein, where even is presented as a mad man. So the second, first, violence, violence, sin, cruelty. Second point, uh, power is a madness. Uh, people exerting power are separate from the world, separate from their friends. They cannot sleep. 
they think about the end. They are feared of everything, everyone. They are feared to lose power by the plot, by others' will. Uh, Metropolite was killed by by the order of Tsar. Tsar thought that he killed him and burned out. This is not true, for the monks saved Metropolite body. But what is important as the opposition to this coercive, cruel vision of power, Metropolite power reside in his resided in his touch. He was weak in comparison to the Tsar, for that was the Tsar who killed him. But the miracle made by Metropolite also was influential. He died on the earth, but he survived through his deeds. He, his force was not sent concentrate on, on killing, on going through the dark and death, on exercising, but his force, his power was to heal people, to heal him, them, sorry, to heal them mm, physically by his touch and to heal them mentally in their spirits, in their hearts, to make them remember how to be good man or good woman. That was his force. So uh, we may say that, uh, earthly speaking, Metropolite who died, uh, he lost his, uh, he lost his life, so he lost his position. He was destituted by Tsar. So we may say that was the end, earth, and of his power. On the other hand, we see that at the end of Tsar action, you got the, on, on the photo, the part of the movie. That is the end of Tsar. Loneliness and darkness. So there is a difference of ends, if I may say that in this way, uh, the end of Metropolite, the end of one power is the bright, bright fire, the light. This is a Holocaust, but bright Holocaust. The end of Tsar is in the dark, in the death. And uh, next point, if I may say the next uh, 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 mm, next slide. Uh, Uh, that is the end of the movie, of the story about two powers, about the way through the dark and death. Uh, Metropolite survived as a miraculous relic, which end, whose end is symbolized by foul fire, this, his perfection, his purity, and great 
banquet, Tsar's banquet, were all Moscow inhabitants had been invited. As a matter of fact, you see, you see the dark dog participating in the banquet, in the banquet, Tsar's banquet. Tsar is alone. There is no one left to be killed. He, he had killed all people. It is imaginative, of course. He had killed all people. He's the only one person exerting power. And uh, no invited people. No people at all, only dogs. And this is last sort of last supper of Tsar. And as you can understand, imagine the presence of dog is ambiguous for dog on the banquet. It is not the precious host. This the symbolic end of Tsar punitive power. And it is, of course, a trap for Christ, which is completely inefficient. No Christ. The only trap, the only <laughs> being trapped by Tsar's will is this dog you see on the picture. So, sort of conclusion at the end, how the movie earlier, Vladimir Sorokin novel, Day of the Opritchnik, how they discussed the lay power, the power uh, in 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 how to say Russian imaginative world. So they divide power into two parts. The first one, the political power based on the madness of people who exist it, based on the fear that you may lose it by the action of your false friend or true enemy. So inevitably you are condemned to fight, to be anger with, to dream and to believe, not believe, Finally, you are condemned to the, the end where you are alone, no subjects, no friends, no allies, only death and darkness. You cannot win as a normal person this race for power. This is one political power, which is linked inevitably with cruelty, aggression, uh, everything bad, which is on the earth. The second power you exert by touch, by memory, by your own kindness, it's represented by this, that was represented by the personality, arts and deeds of Philip Kovitschev. And this power is long lasting power, long lasting. However, on the earth, it couldn't protect you from the strong forcible uh, 
and human death oriented uh, political power. This is a poetic touch when we discuss uh, the film, the movie, uh, its uh, images, its personalities, as one of the many voices in the great discussion about the theme, what power is, what it could be, and finally, what is the, mm, the danger of power, what is its appeal. And I think that this film and uh, and novel alike, both. However, they are rather old because novel was first was first published in two o o six. A movie was made in two o o nine. They both form interesting object to. Um, uh, to be sunny as a, as a peculiarity, as a characteristic discourse used in, in Russian cultural milieu context uh, when uh, the power uh, is where the power is discussed. Uh, I think that is uh, all I got uh, well, as, a, as a lecture for you. So I'm waiting. Perhaps someone would like to ask the questions, uh, make the comments, or whatever you are pleased to, well, to react. Please. Mm. Dear Professor, yeah. I'm reaching to <laughs> for me it was uh, very uh, creepy with this dog topic this yeah it was really I don't know dark and scary and I just is this okay. a symbol of something this dog? yes of course yes of course yes of course well um, well I put aside a little bit for this presentation uh, the mm, very concrete analyze of the movie. But when you look at the movie, you see, you see head of the dog, 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 representing uh, Oprichniki uh, attached to the saddle. This is a head of dead dog. And you see in the last scene, you see also black dog representing the loyal people of Moscow, but not people, the loyal people of Moscow, loyal being of Moscow. Once again, dark dog, uh, black dog coming to the banquet. So it is a combination of two to how to say to to to, to semiotic sphere one the christian very christian supper uh banquet uh eucharisty the communion with tsar can be made also through the common meal common eating with tsar there's a sort of communion we invite in christian tradition invite well in christian traditions well believers are asked to follow uh precepts of his master jesus christ and to join him in eucharisty to share his body and blood so this is a christian theme on the other hand loyalty dog is a symbol of something uh bad and something good this ambiguous figure in christian and in russian as well in russian christian 
imagination. On the one hand, dog uh, is a symbol of loyalty and common uh, Russian Christian culture. On the other hand, dog is representing an offensive animal. Uh, may I quote um, a vulgar word? There is a that is that was due to the certain influence of of uh, non-Slavic languages. But um, when someone is uh, saying about another person that his mother was um, resembling a dog, this is offensive, as you know, very offensive uh, um, saying. So dog is positive and negative at the same time. So the translating, not saying that in, in Russian, but translating that in, uh, in, in English, when you say you are son of a uh, dog female, this is, as you know very well, very offensive. So this is my answer about dog and Alexandra. Thank you. Thank you a lot. And the, the translation is perfect. <laughs> Professor, the translation is perfect. <laughs> well, as you certainly know, uh, that was under the influence uh, of uh, Ugrophonic language. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> this, this was the, the result this of the saying. This, uh, no. Okay, perhaps other <laughs> questions. Uh, well, I recommended to to look at the movie and to yeah, of tweet, course. I think that the, the, watching the movie. Mm, movie as a starting point not to believe that movies representing the historical reality of even the terrible but rather to look at the film as a very interesting discussion with some russian cultural themes for instance mamonov in mamonov creation which is very interesting from the artistic point of view there are echoes of, uh, of second part of even the terrible movie made by, by, by uh, Eisenstein. Um, the, well, this is a horror theme, a uh, double person, because Tsar, even the terrible in both movies, is a person with double identity. He look at his shadow in Eisenstein movie. Uh, he is fighting with himself during the night. He's playing himself as a sinner and as a ruler, uh, taking on him his barmas, his clothes. It's very, very interesting, I think, uh, Mamonov creation. And I'm great admire Oleg Jankowski talent. And uh, this is of course for interesting for someone who who is interested in longer Russian Soviet history of of Oleg Jankowski uh, performance. Uh, this his Philip Kovichov uh, full of grace, full of, full of sorrow, full of, uh, mm, if I may say that in French, delicatesse in uh, treating the personality is something very, very interesting. So I recommend to, to look at the movie as, um, not as a historical one, but as a discussion about power, about uh, force, of uh, of human goodness and force of evil as well. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you a lot for such uh, a great presentation. Sorry for some technical moments. Uh, because yeah, it's, sorry. It's not sorry. about uh, 
no, it's for my side because it's not uploading in time sometimes. But thank you a lot, uh, dear professor, for a great lecture, very interesting. And I think that a lot of people will be interested to watch this film from a new, with a new vision of it. Mm. And thank you, thank you again. It's really a very interesting and very inspiring uh, lecture in a field of symbolic and cinematography. Alexander, well, first of all, uh, I would like to thank all people who attended um, the presentation, attended the lecture for um, the presence. Of course, um, many thanks for Alexandra to help me to catch up. Alexandra, do you hear me? Yes, uh, yes, I hear you. <laughs> okay. okay, so, well, hello listeners um, and viewers, thank you for, for your presence. Have a nice time. Take care. Uh,